All right, hello everyone, good afternoon. And we're so excited to have you all here with another Facebook Live. Now today our Facebook Live is sponsored by Honda. So thank you so much Honda for allowing us to continue with these videos. Now, if you don't know already, Earth Rangers is the kids conservation organization. So our goal is to empower youth all across the country to take action and help save our local environments and ecosystem as well as all the animals that share our planet with us. Now, before we get started, we'll introduce ourselves. So hello, my name is Bailey. And hi everyone, I'm Sadie. And today we've brought back two of our animal ambassadors for you to see. Now, hopefully you've been keeping up with our Facebook Lives because today we're going to be putting your knowledge to the test. But before we get started, we should let you know who those ambassadors are. So first, I have Benjamin here, and Benjamin is a yellow-footed tortoise. So he's going to be one of the animals that gets to hang out with you guys for the next little while. All right, and I have Shelly, and she is our Midland Painted Turtle. Now, she's been on a couple of lives so far. She's just looking at herself in the camera. So yeah, you guys are going to get to learn a little bit more about her as well. Now, I'm sure you've realized we brought two shelled creatures along with us today. And we're going to be trying to figure out some of the similarities and differences between Ben and Shelly. And expanding a little further, some of the bigger differences between tortoises and turtles. Now, behind me, I've set up a Venn diagram. So for anyone who's not familiar, what we're going to be doing is putting some similarities between our turtles and tortoises right in the middle and then their unique characteristics on either side. So our goal for the end of our Facebook Live today is to have this Venn diagram completely filled out. But in order to do that, we need some help from all of you. So if you can think of any similarities or differences between turtles and tortoises, make sure to leave them in the comment section so we can add them up on the board. I think we're just about ready to get started. Sadie, why don't you start us off? Awesome. So what I'm first going to let all of you know is that Shelly here is a turtle and Benjamin is a tortoise. But in fact, did you know that all tortoises are actually turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises? And I know that's confusing. Shelly looks like she has, she is also confused. So I'll explain that a little bit more. Basically, a turtle is described as a reptile that is characterized by having a bony shell developed from their ribs that acts as a shield or protection. Now, Shelly has one of those. This is her beautiful shell right here that she uses for protection, but Benjamin also has a shell as well. So that is why Benjamin can be considered a turtle, but Shelly would not be considered a tortoise because they are still very different. So that's kind of our first similarity. They are both turtles, both part of the same family of reptiles. So yeah, that's our first difference. Now, again, we have already some comments of people who have ideas of the differences, so that's awesome. So Lisa says, one likes water and one doesn't. Now, Bailey, does your, does Benjamin like water? So I have to say, Benjamin likes to soak in water, but he's not going to be found swimming in a pond, but he does like humid areas. So we'll say he's sort of fond of water, but he's definitely not going to take a swim in it. What about Shelly? Oh, well, Shelly here is an amazing swimmer, and she is actually going to live most or all of her life in the water, which is the main difference, actually, between turtles and tortoises. So tortoises, though they may like to soak, live mo live all their lives basically on land. But turtles, like I said, live all or most of their lives in the water. So Shelly here spends a large part of her day in the water and can still come out of water um, to come on land and do stuff like that, maybe um, walk around on the grass, find a new pond to swim in. But yeah, that is an awesome difference between them. And Jessica says, Ethan says, both have hard shells. And that is so right. So Bailey, why don't we uh, get into some shell stuff? Because that is kind of the most obvious thing, right, about these turtles and tortoises. So I'll start with Shelly. So if we look at Shelly, she's got this beautiful shell. And if you look at Benjamin, Benjamin also has a beautiful shell. And they both have a carapace. They both have a pla. So this is their upper shell carapace or upper shell. They both have a plastron or a lower shell, and they both have kind of a bridge right here that connects those two together. 
Now, Bailey, what are their shells made of? So their shells are made of keratin. Now that's what they're called scutes that cover the top of their shell. But the shell is actually fused, like you said, to their ribs and skeleton. So they can never come out of their shell. Another cool difference between them is how they shed their shell. So Benjamin here almost sheds like we do in tiny little pieces, whereas Shelly sheds all her scutes at one big piece. So maybe Sadie can point out one big skew on Shelly, and if she were to be shedding, that whole skew would peel off in one solid piece, which is pretty cool. Another difference we can point out between their shells, if you take a look at Benjamin's shell, let's see here, it's pretty high up, it's dome-shaped, whereas Shelly is very flat, she's streamlined, which is great for swimming. Now, if Benjamin were to jump into the water, there's gonna be a lot of drag. It's gonna be really hard for him to get around. That's why it's so important for turtles specifically. They're swimming, they wanna be agile in the water, so they're going to be nice and flat. Can you think of any other difference, Sadie, for their shells? Other differences? Um, well, I think that actually we covered all. Oh, actually, so someone, Lisa said again, can they actually tuck their whole body into their shell? And they both actually can. So if they're worried, say, about predators or maybe they hear someone walking by, Shelly could actually pull her entire body right into her shell, and Benjamin can as well. Yeah, so Benjamin, yeah he's going to tuck his tiny little head into that shell, and he's going to use these big front legs to come in front and cover his head, which is his most important and vulnerable spot. All right. Well, I would also say that their shell is a lot for protection. Would you agree, Bailey? Absolutely. Yeah, right? So it's really hard. It's going to be hard for predators to get in there, especially because it's kind of like a bone, right? So um, I'm sure they probably have different predators since Shelly here is actually native to Ontario and Canada. So you're going to find Shelly. Oh, that's another difference. There we go. So Shelly, you might find near your cottage or on a lake somewhere, maybe in a pond near your house. So Shelly is a Canadian animal. She lives here as well in Ontario. Now, Benjamin, though, is not. Benjamin is from South America, so he lives in the rainforest there. We'll let Bailey explain more, but there you go. She wrote it on the thing. But yeah, so Bailey, do you want to tell everyone where Benjamin is from? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, he's from the rainforest of South America. Now, yellow-footed tortoises like Ben like to stay right in the middle of the rainforest where it's going to be really humid. So for him, we were talking about predators, things like jaguars, really strong cats, Maybe when they're younger, some other birds and reptiles too. But I think for Shelly, she doesn't have any jaguars coming after her. What kind of predators does Shelly have to be afraid of? I mean, I've never seen a jaguar here in Ontario that was out roaming around, thankfully. But um, Shelly, yeah, she definitely has different predators. So when they're eggs, they can be really vulnerable to a lot of animals that you all probably already know, like foxes, raccoons, skunks, even birds or other lizards or snakes, if they come across a turtle egg, they will definitely eat them. But as well, when Shelly's an adult, uh, bigger things like, especially like raccoons, can sometimes be able to get their their hands into the shell, as well as bald eagles. These guys got to watch out for because they can actually pick them up and drop them from really high up and then hopefully they can eat them and get through that shell. So even though Shelly has this hard shell, there are some animals that have figured out how to get past that to her. So yeah, different predators. All right. So we have another person saying, Lenny, Lenny said, are they both the same size? And that's actually such a good question because right now they are kind of almost the same size. Benjamin is just a baby. He is just over two years old, but Shelly, so he is not done growing yet. He will get a lot bigger, which Bailey will tell you about in a minute. But Shelly here is full grown. She's around 20 years old, we think. So they are actually almost way the same right now. So Benjamin, if that gives you any kind of um, idea, Benjamin is going to get a lot bigger than Shelly because he's only two and he's already almost weighing the same amount as her. So um, they are the same size right now, but they won't be forever. Um, and Bailey can tell you more about the size of the tortoises. Absolutely. So Benjamin's species, the yellow-footed tortoise, they're going to get up to about 30 pounds. And they are the largest tortoise species on the mainland of South America. So although he's pretty tiny right now, they're also known as the Brazilian giant tortoise. And one day Benjamin will live up to that name. 
but in general, most tortoise species are larger than turtles. So there is a difference in size, but of course there's always exceptions to the rule because the largest sea turtle is the leatherback sea turtle and it can get to the size of about a small car, the weight of one, and that is absolutely huge. So of course there's going to be some disparity between that, but in general, tortoises usually weigh a lot more than turtles. Awesome. So you actually answered Ethan's question. Ethan would like to know what is the biggest turtle and you were, you said that, the leatherback sea turtle. So that's pretty huge. Shelly can't even believe how big that is because she is not that large. Um, so that's an awesome, awesome question, Ethan. So Sarah says, do they have the same diet? So do you want to start? Absolutely. So Benjamin here is considered an omnivore, but he's definitely eating more plant matter because of course he's not moving very fast. He can't catch a lot of animal food. So things he's gonna be eating is plant matter that's fallen from trees, so a lot of fruit, uh, but a lot of succulents as well. So leaves and roots and some grasses. But of course, if you can find maybe a worm or a slow moving insect, he would definitely gobble that up as well. So although he's still considered an omnivore, which eats both meat and plants, he's definitely, his majority of his diet is coming from those plants. What about Shelly? That is awesome. So Shelly, actually, a lot of turtles are omnivores. So that means that they're gonna eat plants and animals, um, like you said before. So Shelly here actually eats things like algae, tadpoles, frogs, fish, uh, water plants. She can eat carrion, which is also dead animals, which I think sometimes yellow-footed tortoises can eat as well because um, they can catch it. Obviously, it's not moving. So yeah, Shelly is what we call an opportunistic omnivore. So she's going to kind of eat anything that might float by her. And one really cool, another difference between the two of them is that Shelly has to eat underwater because her tongue doesn't move. Not like mine and not like Benjamin's. She can't move her tongue at all. So that is why she has to eat underwater so that that water that she, she'll drink water while she's eating to help push that food down into her tummy. Whereas Benjamin has a movable tongue like ours. So he actually uses his tongue to help push his food into his belly. And I think Bailey is showing us a little bit of that right now. Absolutely. I figured Benjamin went want a mid video snack so he's munching on some bok choy but this is a wonderful example of how tortoises can eat above ground and there is his tongue <laughs> wonderful he's doing an absolutely phenomenal job of showing off his eating now another cool thing about turtles and tortoises and maybe benjamin's shown you oh there he is that he doesn't have really any teeth so try to take a really good look at his mouth Instead, both Shelly and Ben have a beak, so just like a bird. Now, as Benjamin's munching on that, do you want to talk a little bit further about this beak and what's used for Sadie? Absolutely. So I'll put Shelly up a little bit closer, too. So if you look, it kind of looks like she's got a very pointy mouth. Yes, you see that? And she actually has, yeah, like Benjamin, a beak at the very front that's pretty sharp. So that's how she kind of tears her food apart and eats it. Now they have a beak because, and it's like the same as like kind of like a bird, spelt the same way, because when they are in their eggs, they have what we call an egg tooth. And that egg tooth is what Benjamin and Shelly would use when they are ready to hatch out of their eggs. They'll kind of crack it open with this tooth and then they can come out of the shell. And then that's, this tooth kind of falls off after a couple of days. They don't have it forever, obviously. And then it kind of leaves that beak behind. As well, like Billy said, they don't have any teeth either. So instead, they don't lack, they have, they lack true teeth, but instead they kind of have these bony little, uh, uh, little pieces in their mouth um, that kind of help them to chew a little bit of their food, but they aren't actually teeth, which is something really cool about Benjamin and Shelly as well. They also both have ears, but their ears are hidden behind a scale behind their eyeballs. So they both have the same thing. They've got like a hidden internal ear as well. Now, we have more questions. So Chris wants to know, do the males and females look different? So I can start with this one. So Shelly, so in the Midland Painted Turtles, the males and the females look pretty similar. Now there is one big difference. The males are gonna have a really long front claw. So if you look at Shelly's front claws, they're all kind of the same size. But the male is gonna have one big front claw. And actually what he does is he will stroke the female's 
face with it. And that is kind of how he courts her. Maybe wants to get her to go on a date, asking her on a date almost. He's going to rub her face with that long claw. So that's a one big difference between the males and the females. As well as usually the, male, the female turtles are going to be bigger than the males. Now, I don't know if it's the same for tortoises, is it? So for yellow-footed tortoises, it definitely is. The females are getting larger than the males. And now something that's the same with both of them is that males of both species are gonna have a larger tail, which is pretty interesting. But if you were to have a female and a yellow-footed tortoise right next to each other, apart from a very slight difference in size, the easiest way to tell the difference is actually through their behavior. Whereas Shelly, you can see with those different sizes of claw length. So if Benjamin, he's a boy, were to be approached by another tortoise, he's going to shake his head side to side. And if the tortoise responds in the exact same movement side to side, that means they're both male tortoises. Say if Benjamin were to come across another tortoise and he's moving his head side to side, but he doesn't get any response at all, that's how he knows it is a female tortoise. So unlike Shelly, they don't tell based on kind of color or their body, it's just based off of their behavior. It's the easiest way for the tortoises to figure out what's what. Awesome. All right, I think it's time that we maybe talk about legs. And Shelly actually wants to show off her swimming capabilities for all of you. So if you look at Shelly's legs, she's got webbed feet. And she's got really big back feet as well. Sorry, Shelly, but you do. She's got really big back feet. And they're webbed because she's actually an excellent swimmer, super fast, and is able to catch a lot of really good food in the water. As well, she's got these long claws. And those are used mostly to climb onto logs or riverbanks. But as well, she uses them to rip her food apart because she doesn't have a very big mouth. So if she uses her claws, she can rip her food up in tinier pieces and then swallow it underwater. But I'm going to put Shelly in this tank behind me. She's got a lot of water in there and some rocks. So let's put her in. All right, and I'll move her a, you guys a little closer so you can see her swimming around in there. Looks like Shelly's having a phenomenal time in that water. And hopefully you can see how her webbed feet are helping her swim, move that water around her body so she gets propelled forward. Now we were talking about Shelly's legs. So I think it's only fair that I grab Benjamin and you have a look at his feet too. And he's still munching away on this bok choy. So we'll put up his front leg first. Now you can see he doesn't have webbed feet. Instead, he has some pretty durable looking skin and some claws as well. But the big difference, if I move him to the back so you see his back little feet, they almost look like the same legs that an elephant would have. So if Shelly has feet designed for swimming, Benjamin has these really sturdy legs to help him walk around on land. So they're both perfectly adapted to the habitats they're found in. Do we have any more? Maybe similarities or differences coming up, Sadie? All right, let me look. Okay, so yeah, so make sure everyone, if you are enjoying this video, send your thumbs up if you like Shelly's swimming and Benjamin's eating. It's a little different from their lives that we already had before. But I think our next topic could be something really cool about Shelly and Benjamin. So Shelly actually does something amazing. So since she's here, she lives here in Ontario, you probably know as well as I do how cold it can get here. Like she has to go through winters and it gets very, very low, like negative 20s. So what do you think Shelly does? So if you know what Shelly does during the winter to protect yourself from the cold, write it in the comments and we will talk about something else while everyone's trying to answer. But yeah, if you know what Shelly does during the winter, Write it in the comments below. Now we could talk about speed maybe while we are waiting. So I know a lot of you think that turtles are probably really slow and maybe some are, but that might be a little bit of a myth because Shelly behind me is actually kind of fast. Now Shelly can move pretty fast on land. She just kind of uses her legs and she goes, but Benjamin, I've seen him walk around and he is not that fast. He walks really slow and he takes really big steps. So I'm sure a lot of smaller turtles can move a lot faster than some really large tortoises. Would you agree, Bailey? Absolutely. I think in terms of speed, Shelly definitely has Benjamin feet. And even Shelly eats faster than Benjamin does. 
He's still munching on that one little piece of bok choy, whereas when we feed Shelly, she's pretty excited about her food and just munches it all up right away. So overall, I think Shelly's much faster than Benjamin on all accounts. I agree. All right, so we have an answer. Jessica said hibernate, and you are exactly right, Jessica. So Shelly here, to get away from the cold, actually swims down, well, hibernate, but she hibernates under the water, which is incredible because if you think winter is about four to five months long. So when it starts to get cold, Shelly would swim down to the bottom of the pond, marsh, river, wherever she lives, bury herself in the mud, and that is where she stays for all that time, for four to five months. So that means she's holding her breath for that long. Now that is longer than any other turtle, mammal, or reptile, sorry, not turtle, any mammal, reptile, or bird, and probably turtle, can hold their breath for, especially ones that live partly on land. So that's incredible. She's one of the only land kind of turtles that can do this. Now, does Benjamin hibernate? No, he doesn't. So because he's from South America, it's warm there all year round. So he doesn't have to worry about preparing himself for the winter. He's nice and warm all year round, so he actually doesn't hibernate at all. Now, something that we've hinted towards a few times is that both Ben and Shelly hatched from an egg. So both turtles and tortoises do lay eggs. And another interesting thing, so the mum will lay her eggs and cover them up and bury them. But for both species, after that, mum leaves. And it's up to the baby turtles and tortoises to completely fend for themselves. Another really interesting thing about both of their reproduction is that they have something called temperature-dependent sex determination. So that means, depending on how hot or cold it is in the external environment, so just the air around them, that's gonna make a difference in between how many males and females are born from those eggs. So in general, when it's warmer, more females are born. And when it's colder, more males are born. So for them, they're both facing kind of a similar threat as climate change persists. So the warmer it gets, the more females are being born every time. So that's something that's interesting for them, but it does pose a threat as things continue to get warmer. But right now, both species are not endangered. So they're still thriving in the wild, which is great. Awesome. So we have maybe, I also kind of just mentioned habitats, and we haven't talked about that yet, but they are both from different habitats, right? So they're not just different parts of the world, you'd find them in different places. Now, Shelly lives in slow-moving creeks, ponds, rivers, marshes, anywhere that kind of has um, a lot of water, obviously. They need to have a sandy or muddy bottom and lots of aquatic vegetation. As well, there has to be a lot of logs or rocks because actually Midland Painted Turtles can spend up to six hours a day basking to soak up all the sun's rays to warm up. Now there have even been times when you can find Midland painted turtles stacked one on top of the other just because there isn't enough room to bask on a log or a rock. That is until the bottom turtle gets tired of holding them all up, chips forward ever so slightly, and kicks them all off. So these turtles are not only funny, but they do love to bask. And so, yeah, they definitely have to have that as well. Um, so where would you find Benjamin in South America? So like I said, he's living right in the middle of the rainforest. And as I said before too, he loves humidity and water to an extent. So his species loves to be found around tiny little, maybe creeks or water, but they only go in as far as they can stand because Benjamin, unlike Shelly, he cannot swim at all. But that doesn't mean he doesn't like to take a nice warm bath. So what these tortoises will do, will kind of walk up way right into their belly into the water and soak there. And just like Shelly, he also performs a behavior known as basking. And that's when they're sitting out in the sun, soaking up all of the sun's rays, warming up. That's because both of them are considered cold-blooded. So Sadie, what does cold-blooded mean? Wow, great question. This is Shelly's favorite question, actually. So cold-blooded or ectothermic means that they cannot control their body heat like you and I can. So our bodies are controlled by our internal processes. We don't have to control the heat or how our temperatures are. But 
lot of reptiles, so snakes, lizards, turtles, tortoises, they cannot do that. So their surrounding environment actually affects their internal body temperatures. Seashell is coming closer to the glass for this one. This is her favorite topic. So that means that they bask because they want to warm their bodies up so they can do important functions like break down their food or maybe move faster. Shelly, when she has a little bit of sun in her, she can definitely pick up speed and move a lot faster. So, and then, so that's what that means. That's why they need their internal temperatures. Now, if they get too hot, then they can go somewhere shady and then they'll cool down. And maybe that's when they start to sleep or they don't have to use as much energy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what that means. So we are getting a lot of comments here, a lot of questions. So Ethan would like to know how many species of turtles are there in the world. So I think that there are probably lots of turtle species in the world. I'm going to say, I think I read once it was almost 350 maybe a little bit more. So that's a lot of turtle species as well. We actually have eight turtles native to here in Canada. So that's pretty awesome as well. And Shelly, would, again, is one of those species of turtles. Now, let's see. Lisa wants to know how old are they? And I think we might have mentioned it before, but Bailey, how old is Ben? Absolutely. So I'll take up Ben once more. So Ben, he's just a baby. So he's only two years old, but his species can live up to 80. So he has an incredibly long life ahead of him. So he's still considered a baby, but he would be considered an adult around eight to 10 years old. But Shelly is already an adult. So how old roughly is Shelly? So we think that Shelly could be around 20 years old. All right, and so usually these tortoises, uh, I mean, sorry, Shelly's a turtle. Shelly, these species of turtle can live to about 40 years in the wild, so 20 to 40 years in the wild, but up to 50 years or more in captivity. So Shelly still has a lot of years ahead of her. Now, turtles, can I think, can live a long time, but can't tortoises live a lot longer? Absolutely. So in general, of course, tortoises do have a longer lifespan than the average turtle. So although Benjamin is small, like I said, he has an incredibly long life ahead of him, and for most part, again, tortoises are going to live longer than turtles. So they do have a difference in lifespan. All right. That is awesome. Thank you for letting us know that. So how old is Shelly? Oh, these are awesome questions, everyone. So Diana asks, do we have desert tortoises here? And we actually don't have any tortoises here in Canada that are native here. Right, Bailey? That's right. Uh, so any tortoise that you see uh, is probably in captivity. So from a breeding program, uh, they come here and they can be pets, but I wouldn't recommend it. Of course, like I said, he is going to live for a very long time. So he wouldn't definitely make a good pet at all. What about Shelly? Could we own a Midland Painted Turtle? Well, that is an excellent question. So you actually cannot own a Midland Painted Turtle. So since Shelly is native to here in Ontario, she's what we call a specially protected reptile. So you can actually not collect these tort turtles or have them in your homes or anywhere that you have them in captivity um, without a special permit. So in case you're doing research or stuff like that, then you can maybe have a Midland Painted Turtle, but if not, they're actually specially protected here in Canada. So that was an awesome question. Now, I know me and Bailey came up with this yesterday, but we also have something really cool about them as well. Both of them get their names based on how they look. That's a really cool similarity. It's kind of surface level, but Shelly, I'll take her out for all of you. You guys can get a closer. There we go. She's a little bit drippy. So Shelly is called a Midland Painted Turtle. And that is because if you look, she has these beautiful yellow, orange, and red markings kind of all over her body. And it kind of looks like they were painted on with a paintbrush. That's how gorgeous they are. So that's kind of how she gets her name, the Midland Painted Turtle. And of course, yeah, so that is how she gets her name. Now, how does Benjamin get his name? Benjamin is still munching away on this bok choy. So he is known, like I said, the yellow-footed tortoise. So maybe everyone already has a pretty good guess, but he's named for all of these little yellow scales along his feet. Now, another thing that I thought about that's similar with these two is they have species that are often mistaken for them. So for Benjamin, there's something known as a red-footed tortoise. So it looks almost identical to Ben, except they're going to have some red on their feet and even some more reddy orange scales along their head. Now, Sadie, can you think of any species that might be confused for a Midland Painted Turtle? And yeah, I actually can. So we have 
thing, a turtle called a red-eared slider here. And those ones, I'm pretty sure people have had as pets. So sometimes they think that they've had these turtles as pets, which of course you cannot have them. So yeah, red-eared sliders look very similar to the Midland Painted Turtle. I'm pretty sure they get larger though. So that's like kind of one way to tell them apart. But yeah, that's another one that Shelly gets mistaken with all the time. Um, all right, so let's look if we have any more questions. So Diana asked, do most turtles have webbed feet? And yes, I would say they do just because they are living most or all of their lives in the water. And some tor uh, turtles, like turtles that live, so sea turtles, they actually have big flippers instead of, so they don't even have like her feet, their feet wouldn't even look like Shelly's because they wouldn't go really on land at all. They have these big long flippers or fins, um, but Shelly actually kind of has more like feet, but they are webbed. And Benjamin's feet, are they webbed or have we talked yeah. about Benjamin's legs? No, he does not have webbed feet. He has these little, almost like elephant feet with some pretty long claws. Now we mentioned that both Ben and Shelly have some decent sized claws on them, but they have their claws for different reasons. So Sadie's mentioned the turtles use their claws to hold their food and rip it apart and it's also used for their courtship when they're finding a mate. Whereas for Ben, he needs his claws to dig. So he would be a pretty good burrower. So he's gonna dig into the soil, get nice and cozy in the dirt where he would have a nap. Awesome. All right, yeah, so Bailey, how much did we fill in that list behind you? Because I think we are running out of time and that list looks so full. I'm honestly sure that me and Bailey could spend a whole entire day talking to all of you about the differences and similarities between turtles and tortoises. But I think that wraps everything up unless Bailey, you have anything to add. No, I don't think so. We're almost out of time and we're definitely out of space on this Venn diagram. So thank you all so much for helping us fill that in. I think even me and Sadie learned a few things this time. We definitely did. You guys had awesome questions. Now, before we go, we also have some interesting things to tell you about our Earth Rangers app. So the Earth Rangers app is where kids go to save animals. Now it is free to join and to download it. All you have to do is go to the Google Play Store or the App Store and download it onto your phone or iPad or whatever you're using. And then you can get started. So I actually, all, I have the Earth Rangers app already. And so while it is just getting itself together, um, there are some pretty awesome things on there. So we have things like animal adoptions, which allow you to adopt animals like the red fox, the arctic fox, um, eastern milk snake, Osprey, and then when you adopt them, they act that 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 will go towards supporting actual conservation projects that are working to help them in Canada. Now, this is my app right here. I'll show it up to everyone. So you can create your own avatar and advance through levels by completing fun missions like our back your building backyard habitats or helping to protect marine animals from pollution. As and then the more of the missions that you do, the more points you can earn and unlock special rewards, different outfits for your avatar and different habitats all while you journey through some of Canada's coolest places as well in our cabin here we also have our wild wire blog up on here which contains our top 10 lists quizzes and more so that's where you'll find a lot of fun material as well as updates and information on special contests and missions now we also have a really cool um reward for you guys to put into your phone today so we have a code it's called FB summer so it'll probably be as well a link in the comments. So if you use that in your app, you can unlock some really special rewards. And I'm not gonna give it away, but you have to go and unlock that for yourself. Now, I think before we go, we should do one more question because Lisa has a good question. She's asking which one is your favorite. Now that is really hard for me especially um, because I think I love them both so very much. But um, I think my favorite might be Shelly just because she was not only is she adorable look at her looking at herself and her reflection but she was one of the first animals I actually worked with here at Earth Ranger so we've become pretty good friends and I'm glad you chose Shelly so that doesn't make me feel as guilty for choosing Ben as my favorite I mean how can you resist he just had a nice little piece of cauliflower he loves his little snacks and I think he's absolutely adorable and I think tortoises are just absolutely incredible animals so although Shelly is pretty cool, I will admit, I think Benjamin takes the spot as my favorite between our two turtles. 
Well, awesome. There you go. Now, none of them were left out, but they are definitely a favorite of many of you also probably across Canada who have actually met Ben and Shelly in real life. So don't forget to use the code FBSUMMER in the app for your bonus reward. We are about to head out, but thank you all so much for joining us today for our special Facebook Live. Send us some thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.